allowing many tasks to be delegated to user space. Bruce Wayne has prepared a fantastic guided tour on what we can do with and to that user land. Please give a warm, fuzzy welcome to our next speaker, Bruce Wayne. Uh, hello, I'm Bruce. Probably already you know me, but uh, I will introduce myself. So I'm no longer a superhero. Now I'm working in IT because uh, working as a su superhero is pretty much, um, you know, it's a hard task and it's uh, easier to work in IT. So by day I am uh, now a pen tester. By night I'm trying to uh, fix some open source pro projects, including the NetBSD. Um, so, uh, how many NetBSD users do we have here? Any of you? Few, yeah. So, uh, for the guys on the stream, it's a full tent of uh, NetBSD uh, users. And I want to also uh, tell that it's my first camp, as you may uh, suspect, and it's super cool. I met here so many fr friendly uh, people, and I'd like to uh, give an applause for uh, organizers and volunteers and all people that let it happen. So, <laughs> thank you. So uh, the NetBSD. So it's like just like any other operating system, but the better one. Uh, the BSD, so you might think that B stands for Berkeley, but in fact, it's uh, Batman. Um, it's a net, uh, NetBSD is multi-architectural, uh, and it can, it, it can be run on top of uh, many uh, uh, hardware, including the Atari or Amiga, one of the name servers of the NetBSD is uh, running on top of uh, Amiga. And it's not just a kernel, it's a kernel and uh, the user land so uh, we are rather um, uh, cathedral, not the, uh, the bazaar. And I'm going to talk about RAMP kernels, which is implementation of the uh, any kernel uh, idea, uh, because it's my opinion is pretty underrated uh, an NetBSD uh, feature. And I will try to convince you that it's super cool. Uh, I will show you a few demos, even crash the NetBSD, the great uh, NetBSD for you. Uh, by using RAM kernel. So, uh, sorry. So, uh, have you seen uh, Ilya von Sprundel talk about the BSD last year? It was at DEF CON and then at CCC in uh, December, I think. Uh, he was talking if the all BSDs are created uh, equally. Basically, it was a uh, uh, audit of the FreeBSD kernel, of the NetBSD kernel, and the OpenBSD. And in fact, he found like 60 bucks in Net, uh, NetBSD. For sure, we weren't um, happy about that. Uh, but one developer fixed all those 60 bucks overnight. So it's a pretty, pretty good uh, uh, result. But we are not happy about it, so we decided to do some uh, quality improvements. And there are many projects ongoing to um, help us nail more bugs in the NetBSD. Uh, most of them, or some of them, ra uh, rather, are uh, connected with uh, fuzzing. Uh, we have a few projects sponsored by uh, Google Summer of Code, which includes AFL 3 force and fancy stuff like that, or Syscaller. But today, I'm going to show you uh, how we can fast the NetBSD uh, kernel in the user space. Uh, besides that, we have also um, things that led us to nile bugs uh, in the kernel space uh, by using uh, address sanitizer on top of kernel or undefined behavior uh, sanitizer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in fact, we are now um, well, the most uh, sanitized uh, BSD um, in the world. So um, many interesting uh, projects are ongoing. But the question for you, what is the logo of the NetBSD? 
orange flag, great. So uh, let me also tell you some tri uh, trivia fact about the NetBSD. Do you know who is proof? Any ideas? So in fact, uh, it is uh, Julian Assange. He was the NetBSD uh, developer like 20 years ago. And still his code is in the NetBSD. So uh, if you are using SL attach, I think it's, yes, SL uh, attach uh, pr uh, program, then uh, you have the Julian's code. So um, the NetBSD uh, logo looked like this a uh, few years ago, but now it's like this. But we, we're going to pretend like the logo uh, looks like this, because it would be uh, easier for me to um, to let you know about the RAM uh, kernel. So let's pretend that this is the NetBSD uh, kernel. We can call this daemon like um, maybe uh, Robin. So the RAMP stands for the runnable u user meta uh, programs. And I don't really know. I, I have no idea uh, what it means. So uh, I decided to dig into documentation and um, let you try um, to understand it. So I created uh, this painting to let you know how it works. So basically, we want to decompose the NetBSD kernel into pieces, which can be run on top of anything. And in our case, uh, anything means that we are going to run it on top of uh, Linux, so we can fix uh, the Linux wo uh, world with uh, our implementation. But in fact, the any kernel means that you can run these parts of the NetBSD wherever you want to. Uh, from the um, architecture point of view, it looks like this. Uh, so um, there is a little uh, library called RAMP, which uh, gives the primitives that let us to uh, run the FS stuff or VFS or INET or whatever we want to. And there is some glue between uh, RAMP and uh, something. Uh, it doesn't matter right now wh uh, what it is, but for example, if we want to run the NetBSD kernel on top of the uh, user space, then uh, we should implement the RAMP uh, user to, um, to give the primitives from the user space so we can uh, run a uh, RAMP on top of it. For now, you can think about the whole thing, that this is uh, just a very light uh, virtual ma ma machine. It's not necessarily true, but less or more is like this. But in fact, I, I also uh, told you that it can be run on top of uh, uh, anything. And really, it can be run in kernel space, user space, outer space. It really doesn't matter. So uh, why this is cool? So you can ramp, uh, sorry, you can run the TCP stack or file system or, the, or any other part of the, of the uh, kernel in the user space. I will show you why this is cool. Uh, l uh, later, I have a demo. And in fact, you can also de uh, debug things in the uh, user space, which is pretty convenient. Uh, also, for a developer, it's uh, very convenient to run it in, uh, you, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, I can speed up my uh, development uh, pr uh, process because I don't need to uh, reboot my station, etc. Etc. Have you ever tried to debug a kernel? Any of you? Is it easy task or uh, rather not? You have to set up. Yeah, it's a very complicated stuff. So uh, sometimes you need a serial port and connect two machines. It's it's not that easy. And I'm going I'm going to give you um, a demo that. 
in, Net, in NetBSD, it's uh, e easy. And in fact, you can also use the user land tools on top of the uh, RAMP uh, kernel. So you can use GDB or Valgrind or whatever you want to. So the first demo is to show you the GDB um, the, the debugger. So, sorry. Um, Oops. Um, let me scale it. Um, scale mode. So the resolution has changed, and I don't know if you see it. It's okay. Okay, so uh, have you ever tried to use DDB? DDB as a built-in um, debugger into the NetBSD uh, kernel. You can um, get into by some magic um, key sequence. And now we are running in uh, kernel space the debugger, but it's pretty simple uh, debugger. Much, uh, I mean that many um, f features are not here, and using that is pretty inconvenient. So um, I will run the RAMP kernel on top of uh, Linux and show you how you can debug the NetBSD uh, kernel in user space. So um, so I executed the RAMP. Uh, kernel here in the G e GDB, and it is uh, listening for the connection on port number 10,000, because the RAMP CTRL is uh, just a tiny script, less or more it's the same as uh, SSH connection to RAMP uh, on server. And let's, uh, let's pretend that I want to debug the uh, ICMP protocol. So. Let's set a breakpoint for a function ECMP input. Do you know what ECMP input does? Any ideas? No ideas? Yeah, less or more. So let's set a breakpoint, continue a program. And what do you think? How I can trigger that breakpoint? Sorry? You, you have to scream because I can't hear you. Any ideas? Ping, yeah. So we're going to send ping to the uh, RAMP uh, machine. So let's try to do it. Oh, um, but first of all, I'm in DDB right here. So let's continue kernel here. Yes, so RAMP ping. I'm not going to show you the details and talk about the details here because uh, I want to just show you the idea so you can explore things by yourself. So let's send just one packet there. As a, and as you can see, the breakpoint uh, was uh, fired. And we can, in very convenient way, uh, debug it just like any other the user land program, and we exploit this fact. Sorry, we exploit this fact to write a test for the NetBSD. Also, I will show you how it looks like. So, for, for example, in this test case, in, u in user space, we are checking if our network stack is uh, working pro uh, properly, and we can set up in the user space. Mm, program the whole ne uh, network or the whole network configuration, so uh, it's a really powerful tool. And another another demo is to oh, sorry, yeah, another demo is to show you how to run uh, the TCP/IP stack of the NetBSD on top of the Linux, so you can. Um, Show to the internet only the NetBSD implementation, which is running in user space. 
And then we, need, uh, we are going to run on another box HTTPD, which is going to use that um, TCP IP uh, stack on top of uh, Linux. Do you get it? Pretty much, yeah. So you can ask me why I want to do it. I have no idea, but it's cool. So let's try to uh, set it up. But first of all, I need to delete my breakpoint. So I want, so I don't break the demo. So let delete all breakpoints. Yeah. Um, where is my cursor? It's, it's here. Okay. So um, first of all, I need to configure uh, TCP, IP, TCP IP stack on top of the uh, Linux. And the um, driver which lets me to, to, do that, to do that is called Virt, uh, which just uh, creates a tune uh, device on top of uh, Linux. So I can um, simply configure both uh, RAMP kernel and uh, Linux, so let's do it. Um, yeah, so we're going to use RAMP if config weird zero create. So we created the weird zero device. Uh, and we have to assign an IP here, so let assign IP like this. Netmask, what's your favorite uh, Netmask pick? Any. 24. So, whoops, sorry. I hope it won't break my demo, but let's see. So it should be configured. Let's see. Yes, it is. So we should also set up the Linux part. And there is a crazy pr program right now on, on Linux if config is no longer uh, uh, an option. So uh, I hope that you will help me because I'm not the Linux guy. There is IP. Ah, let's see if the Toon0 is here. Toon0 is here. We have to se uh, set it up. So IP ADDR ADD ADD um, 002.24 def Toon0. Yeah, and I have to set the um, uh, interface up. And as far as I remember, it's IP set, ah, oh, sorry, link set tune zero up. What was wrong with IFI config? I have no idea, but for some uh, reason now cool kids use the IP. So we, had, we have a, a connection, I guess. Let's try to ping 001, yeah. We have. So now we created this part, and now we have to run HTTPD, which uh, will proxy syscalls, sockets, syscalls from box one to box two. So HTTPD can use the um, TCP IP stack of the RAMP uh, server. So let's try to do it. So this is uh, another box. On the left side, I have uh, I have a box two. On the right side, I have a box one. As you can see, it's uh, it's uh, net, uh, the NetBSD, and NetBSD is shipped with the HTTPD. And that HTTPD is called uh, Bozo HTTPD, and is pretty uh, simple daemon. Deep exec HTTPD minus B minus F minus E. So I'm going to listen on a port 999, 9999. And which directory you want to serve to the internet? Through the NetBSD stack, who is running on to, uh, which is ru running on top of uh, Linux? Etc. Etc. Yeah, we well in. It's pretty standard, I, I, I believe. But we should also do another thing. Uh, if we uh, execute the HTTP like this, 
it's going to use the native uh, IP, uh, TCP IP stack. So we have to preload something which is called user lib, um, lib ramp hijack. So we simply hijack the socket stuff and uh, pr uh, proxy to the uh, other uh, TCP IP stack. And I wanted to serve the ETC. Ah, there is ETC. OK. So let's see if it works. Um, links, HTTP. 001 was the NP, uh, TCP IP stack which we configured. Port number 9999. Which file from the uh, ETC you want? Network file. Password for pass WD. Uh, shadow won't work. Ah, it, it's gonna work, but there is no sh uh, shadow on, uh, in, in the BSD world. What is the file called in the BSD world? Any ideas? Uh, master dot, yes, master dot pass WD. Yeah, so it works. Um, so, as you can see, it's pretty cool, but yeah, why, why, why we uh, di uh, did that? I have no idea, but I will show you uh, another, um, how we can apply uh, the ramp kernel another way. So let's get back to the presentation. Well, the cool thing is that if, uh, for, for example, I'm fighting w with uh, Joker, so if he want to he wants to um, e exploit my TCP stack. Uh, if it's running in uh, uh, user space, I have another uh, layer of security. So maybe that's why we, uh, we did that. Yeah, and about fuzzing, I guess that all of you, all, all of you already heard about it. So I'm going to just present a story of uh, the invention of, of uh, fuzzing. So uh, Professor Barton uh, Miller in 88 was working from the remote on his uh, computer and it was dark and stormy night and the thunderstorm caused that uh, his commands were mutated. So, and he noticed that that mutations uh, are making people uh, are making the programs to crash. So um, he thought that maybe it's a good idea to use it and see if other pro uh, programs behave like that. So what would you do if you were Barton uh, Miller? He made an assignment for his students to test it, and they were able to crash like 50 percent of the Unix tools of, I mean, the uh, existing uh, Unix tools. And 30 year, years uh, la later, the fuzzing went uh, mainstream. And there are many flavors of, of fuzzing. One of them is dump fuzzing. And if you ever tried fuzzing, actually, the dump fuzzing works. And if you work for academia, then probably you are trying to use some uh, feedback-driven fuzzing, which uses the SMT stuff or not theory and things like that. And I have a comic strip f for you about that. Just let's get back to the... Yeah. Probably you know that uh, comic strip. I don't know who is the uh, author, but it is so true. Dump fuzzing uh, usually works pretty well, so don't be scared scared that you are uh, doing simple things because I will show you that uh, it works. So, yeah, so to test uh, NetBSD, we created something called FuzzRamp, which is just a fork of, of built ramp, which lets you to cross compile the ramp for uh, mm, any uh, POSIX compatible uh, system. And in our case, any means that it works on top of Ubuntu and don't try uh, any other uh, platform because probably it's not going to work. But if you want to uh, port it, then we will be more than happy. 
Uh, we also uh, realign uh, the baseline from uh, uh, NetBSD uh, 7 to NetBSD 9, which is going to be released when it's ready. Uh, but actually it was br uh, branched, so uh, we use the current uh, version in full ramp. And we have also an AFL support, and I'm going to show you how it works. And what problems we encountered. So in case of allocators, many uh, subsystems in the kernel used uh, a pattern where they were allocating a big chunk of uh, memory. And the problem is that if you want to use uh, address sanitizer, then address sanitizer is not aware what is uh, happening inside of this big chunk. So instead of uh, allocating one big chunk, uh, we wrote a, pa uh, a patches to uh, allocate just the small ones. So w we can uh, detect if something is, is happening between those chunks. And we uh, rewrote stuff like KMEM, pool, Etc. Etc. Et and also the problem is that Ramp kernel, uh, if you compile the application which uses the uh, Ramp uh, kernel, in order to uh, avoid the clashes between the name functions, Ramp renames it every function of the kernel with the prefix Ramp and S. And the problem is that address sanitizer is not able to see that ramp ns uh, memset is in fact a memset. So we created just a simple uh, library to uh, expose the memset instead of ramp ns uh, memset. And you, uh, using it is as easy as doing simple elder reload. So uh, address sanitizer can be happy again. And what to look for? Well, um, you know, uh, the kernel is a little bit di different than the usual land pro uh, program. And I mean that if we have a leak in a kernel or something like that, and it can be triggered from the user, uh, then probably by repeating one leak, you can stop the whole uh, kernel. So. This is uh, pretty uh, dangerous. And in fact, if you use the ramp, uh, you can also use the address sanitizer feature, which is called leaks sanitizer, uh, to detect th those leaks. So I'm going to show you the dump uh, use case of uh, ramp kernel. So, uh, well, I started this project like uh, two or three years ago, and it was my first approach to fast the kernel. Um, I created a very simple fuzzer, which looks like this. I'm going to show you the configuration file of it. It is here. So I just provided the... Um, prototypes of the syscalls that we have in the NetBSD. And it's, pr it's pretty, well, easy, because I just co uh, copy paste the prototype from the codes, and, th and that's it. And I had a, thanks to Minerva Leap Father, I had a father in five uh, minutes, minutes. And you can uh, execute it like this. TCP. Oh, sorry. Um, let's try with ten iterations. Um, so it simply calls the random functions with the random uh, arguments, and in fact, we were able to find a lot of bugs. You, using it, which is quite embarrassing, right? Because we are rather not supposed to have bugs like that in, in the kernel. But if we can use other sanitizer, then we nailed bugs, which are not necessarily caused the, pa the panic of the kernel or things like that. It was just uh, 
mm, harmless bugs, but in fact they were bugs. I have uh, maybe here, yeah. I have here the example report from the fuzzing session. Let's take this one. So we found bugs like two years ago and it was uh, fixed. And then I uh, had a two years break and I wanted to check if I can use AFL on top of uh, the RAM kernel. Well, it wasn't a trivial task to port, but we managed to compile uh, RAM using uh, AFL, Clunk, and things like that. And I'm going to show you how easy it, it is to, um, to fuzz the NetBSD with AFL. So if you want to do it, you have to fuzz RAM clients, yes. Let's, for now, I will show you the FFS example, which is just the file uh, system. So we have here, um, uh, simply we are um, mounting the file, which is provided in the arguments of this um, client. So it's, we just wrote uh, 15 lines of code, and we are able to run uh, it in the uh, AFL and find the bugs. And I will show you that we, in fact, found some bugs. But let me log here. Well, I'll show you the crash we found uh, recently in X2 file system. Yeah? Yeah, I know. Thank you. So, um, in order to mount the crash EMG, you have to do it this way. So, it's kind of a loop in the uh, or in the uh, li uh, Linux world, and then we're going to mount it x to fs def and zero mmt. And what do you think? What is going to happen? Crash. Yeah, yeah. So it crashed, and it was found thanks to 15, pers uh, 15 li lines of code in uh, AFL. It's a division by zero bug in the X2FS. But in fact, if you want to exploit that, you have to be a root. So it's pretty uh, harmless. And that's why I show it uh, publicly right now. And we also decided that you know, the FS stuff is, well, it's, I, I, I would say that we expected to find the many bugs in file systems because if you mount, um, you know, uh, unknown uh, I I image, then uh, you are not responsible. So we thought that fuzzing network could be um, more interesting. And our first approach was to use just the raw sockets in Trump uh, kernel, but we had a problem that we didn't know when the packet is handled by the kernel, because there is, uh, for example, if you send the IP, uh, IP uh, packet to the NetBSD, it's handled by soft interrupt, uh, and we don't know when it's going to uh, be fired up. So we decided to, well, it's another cool feature that from the point of view of the application, you can call any um, kernel function, which is cool, but, well, it, we are abusing here um, our API a little bit. So I'll show you how it looks like. Um, let's get back to the terminals. Um, we have here a program called net input. Net input is a program that reads a packet from the standard input and simply pushes it to the, to the network stuff. We call here function fuzzramp IP input and we implemented that function in our kernel. I will show you the implementation. SRC 
this net i net i p uh, input fuzz ramp. So yeah, here we have uh, implementation of the function that feeds the uh, network stuff stack. So it just uh, put the data into the uh, mbuff and pushes it to the uh, IP input uh, function. We also had to um, pretend like we are the software input, but it's harmless. And what do you think by using this approach? How many bugs we have found so far? And you should ask me, Batman, but what about the checksums and stuff like that? If you mutate packets, then you're going to uh, have invalid packets because of the, the checksums. So I show you, showed you that we are um, feeding the loopback uh, device and the checksum are uh, turned off there. So we don't have to care about it. And how many bugs we have found? What do you think? 20. Any other ideas? So uh, we have found nothing, nothing yet at least, which is both pretty cool. Uh, as a developer, I'm really proud of it. As a bug hunter, I'm pretty sad about it. But it's not that our um, effort is uh, uh, meaningless, because now we have a corpus that of, the, of the packets that covers pretty much of our network stack. So we can test every change by running this uh, corpus if uh, anything is uh, broken. And in fact, it wasn't a big surprise because the network stack is pretty well tested in the wild. If you ever connected any box to the internet, you know that a lot of very um, special packets are there. Everyone is trying to uh, scan you, etc., etc. Et so it's not a big surprise. But at least we are not noobs because we run the NetBSD kernel in the user space. We can compile it with the AFL. And finally, uh, we want to cover more uh, drivers, drivers, especially the Wi-Fi stack and the Bluetooth stuff. In if you want to help us you would be more than happy uh, to co cooperate with you. We can also try to uh, integrate this project with the OSS FAST by Google. So we would have... Um, we can have uh, um, reports from them that we, well, have a broken kernel or something like that. So uh, I know also that uh, other operating systems like, li uh, like uh, Linux have the same things uh, as RAMP. Prob I don't know if it's working or not. Maybe you would tell me. For example, in uh, Linux, there is a LibOS. Have you ever tried to use it? Not really. But I think that it's not as advanced as RAMP stuff. So uh, maybe. Um, you can uh, wo uh, work on it. Yeah, and I also want to say big thank you, especially to Michal, who helped me a lot. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> thank you. Great, so if you have questions, we have a microphone angel standing over there. We have a microphone angel standing over there. And we have perhaps some questions from the internet for Batman. No questions for Batman. The internet is very disappointing this evening. But here we have a question. Thanks for a nice talk. Um, You're welcome. As I understand, you started your project before Syscaller uh, started to support BSD, right? Yes, uh, the Syscaller was implemented last year, I think, as a part of the Google Summer of Code. Uh, I started my project like in 2017, but uh, you know, my free time, uh, I'm a superhero, so uh, my free time is, uh, well, I don't have much free time, right? But anyway, it is really great. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. And if we compare your, your approach with 
I would say, native fuzzing inside of virtual machine. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, I have um, better things? Well, uh, uh, currently um, there was a blog post on the NetBSD blog about uh, fuzzing file systems using the IFL and Kcov, which is uh, coverage from kernel, there is a special um, device in the dev tree, so you can uh, run a syscall and see which functions were triggered. And uh, the guy who wrote this blog, I think, he was able to run like 40 executions per uh, second. And using this uh, approach, we are we can do a few hundreds cool. uh, re, um, tests per second. Like uh, in case of the network stuff, we are able to inject like 10,000 packets per second. And the the problem right now is that you know it's my hobby project mo uh, mostly. I think that uh, well, you you can use the Jacob stuff on top of the the RAM. Kernel, so getting the coverage is pretty easy. Uh, you can uh, run the AFL and see which um, branches are trig uh, triggered or not. And then you can put the um, test cases for that branches inside your uh, corpus and run the AFL again. But, uh, you know, it takes time and it's not necessarily an exciting task. So, if you want to help us with it, then you are more... Uh, well, I, I'll be very happy about it. And a small additional question about NET. Uh, so, do you have some descriptions of protocols, network protocols, to have more efficient fuzzing? Or you just no, no, no. leave it to IFL? Well, I, I, I uh, built my uh, corpus. I, I took the test from the... Uh, Hongfas uh, implemented s pretty much the same thing for uh, Linux, but it's not working in the user space. But they have a big co corpus of packets, and I simply took it and tried how it works with the, the NetBSD. And, uh, sorry, uh, last, last one. one. Okay. <laughs> and then we have to ask the internet if there's any internet questions. Uh, so this is, this is your last yeah. one. As I understand, you fuzz uh, under root or super user. In, uh, yes. Well, uh, it doesn't matter if it runs as, as root or not. You can run uh, RAMP as a normal user. But the thing is that if you want to use super features like the virt interface and things like that, you need a super user mm, power. And maybe I showed you the demos as a super user because I'm a superhero. So that's it. Great. Any last thoughts from the internet? No last thoughts from the internet. Then a last thought from us here for Bruce Wayne. Let's hear it. Thank you.